What up guys, Jay here from TV Tom with Jay and I'm back once again with another review and this time I'm here to review The Good Doctor Season 4 Episode 1 Frontline. Now, as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory. You have been warned. Okay, so... As the title of the episode implies, we are dealing with a full pandemic season. And our, you know, good doctors of St. Bonaventure are on the front lines handling the situation. So, first things first, man, I have to say, this episode just felt way too real. Um, I have an aunt who is a nurse, and my cousin works in patient transport. So, you know, I know a lot of people in my family are within the medical field, and I've heard, you know, plenty of stories all throughout, you know, this whole time frame of, you know, how hospitals are dealing with it, the stress that, you know, all these people are under, you know, all the, all the hard work they have to go through because this disease is new, it's unpredictable, and, you know, because people don't want to listen to precautions... Cases just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And we kind of see this all throughout this first episode and kind of the effects of the pandemic, not only within the hospital and the hospital's infrastructure, but also on the individual doctors, their own personal morale, their personal lives, and kind of like the lives of the patients and how, you know, obviously the doctors connecting with the patients and how that affects them as well. So... First things first, uh, really, um, I didn't care for the Sean and Leah stuff. I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, I did not like Sean and Leah getting together last season. Honestly, I preferred Carly, and this is not just like a, a ship thing. I just always found Leah annoying. She only felt like uh, she used Sean when she needed him. She was selfish, um, arrogant. I, I just, I don't like Leah. Um, I'm not going to deny, though, she does know Sean pretty well, she can handle him pretty well, and she is very good at, you know, de-escalating situations with him. And the moment that she had with him where she, you know, did that small gesture and bought him that thing uh, that helps with the mask so it doesn't hurt his ears because he was complaining about how the elastics, like, like the straps cut into his skin back here, um, that's pretty interesting. And honestly, it was really nice and thoughtful, so, you know, there is development with Leah, but still, as of right now, I haven't been won over by Sean and Leah as a couple. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I think, you know, happy overshare Sean is hilarious, but at the same time, I'm just like, dude, I do not want to hear this. I really don't want to hear this. Like, let's just get on with it. Um, also, uh, Glassman, he is obviously struggling because you know he's an older gentleman so he's much more at risk so he can't necessarily be at the hospital making all the decisions and calls in the field he has to you know go to zoom meetings and you know just kind of handle things from behind the desk at home and like uh, it's very frustrating to him because he's obviously been always been a very proactive like in the field type of doctor and it's really getting to him and it causes a lot of tension between him and his wife uh, because you know his wife like any other person is tired of being cooped up they're tired she's tired of just kind of staying at home and being forced to be inside she wants to go shopping she wants to you know go to the store bring at least a little bit of normalcy back into her life and you know i feel like all of us can relate to that for sure considering you know how times are right now Obviously, you know, your first priority should and always be staying safe, being protected, taking precautions. But I also understand the fatigue of like, you know, oh my God, when is this ever going to end? You know, like it just, those thoughts always are going to creep into your head. Um, and of course, you know, we had a lot of different unique patient situations. Um, Sean and I want to say Andrews. Yeah, it was Andrews that was paired with Sean. Sean and Andrews uh, dealt with this guy. Um, I want to say his name was like Norman. Uh, his wife was also a frontline worker and uh, he ended up developing COVID and uh, she blamed herself. 
she's constantly there on FaceTime, you know, watching things, asking questions. And, you know, Sean is, of course, Sean. So he's always going to be super blunt and straightforward. He doesn't really, you know, know a thing about bedside manner. And so, you know, it causes her a lot of stress. She lashes out to him. And, of course, you know, he is getting frustrated as well because he doesn't get to see Leah. Uh, you know, he doesn't get to, you know, have sex, do what he wants to do. Um, his own normalcy is interrupted. And you got to also think Sean is on the spectrum. So having routines and normalcy is kind of very, very important for him as a person and as a character. And the inherent unpredictability of the disease is also going to extremely frustrate him as well. Uh, meanwhile, um, I did like the subplot with Lim and Claire, where they're like kind of both bonding over grieving Melendez's death, and you know, Claire's still really hung up on it, and she ends up helping Lim treat a patient who is a mother. And basically the daughter is, you know, always waiting outside the hospital, waiting for reports and like, you know, asking how her mom is. Uh, and eventually her mom, unfortunately, succumbs to COVID and dies. And, you know, it's a big hit, obviously, to the daughter. But like for Claire, it also kind of reflects the major losses that she's felt recently kind of back to back with both the loss of her mother and, of course, the loss of Melendez. And, you know, she, you know, does her best to try and help this girl by, you know, getting this cross that her mother had across her neck that was kind of like a, you know, a valued, treasured artifact to her. So she's going in there. And at the end, she ends up seeing Melendez's ghost. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what this is going to lead to. Is this just kind of a sign of extreme fatigue for Claire? Is she actually seeing his ghost? What the hell is going on with that? Very interesting to see. Um, and then the other big thing with Resnick and uh, one of the nurses is they were exposed to COVID and so were a lot of people in the hospital because they had no idea that the patient they were, they were treating who at first they thought had kind of a, um, you know, normal kind of a problem, you know, a non-COVID problem, uh, was actually carrying or, you know, had COVID. So, you know, now they're in full panic mode with that. So, all in all, man, I thought this episode was really, really solid. It had a lot of real moments, uh, like, a lot of just really, really heartbreaking just moments seeing, you know, how hard the hospital is working to just do the absolute bare minimum how frustrated these doctors are that they can't even really help they're only kind of delaying the inevitable you could really feel the tension in each and every scene and this felt like a real hospital and like i said it definitely reflected you know stuff i've heard from you know my cousin and my aunt and other people like that who have worked in the medical field during the pandemic I'm actually really curious to know anybody out there who uh, might be watching this who does work in the medical field in any capacity, uh, does this episode or did this episode for you, if you've seen it, uh, reflect accurately kind of the stresses in working in the medical field on the front lines during this crazy pandemic? Let me know all those thoughts and feels in the comments down below. Are you looking forward to the rest of The Good Doctor Season 4? Uh, do you think they did a good job, you know, kicking off this pandemic season? Let me know, like I said, those thoughts and feels in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I review a bunch of other great TV shows as well. So uh, definitely hit that subscribe button to keep up with uh, what I have coming up. The fall TV season is uh, really starting up again, so definitely, you know, check it out. In the outro card, I will leave linked a video YouTube mysterious algorithm things you might like, which I hope you do. And I will also leave linked uh, my most recent upload, so you can get a feel for what I have to offer here on the channel. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from TV Time with Jay, and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next review. Peace.